With this improved version of the third generation design, the Renault Traffic gets a range of more efficient 2 litre DCI diesel engines, the option of EDC auto transmission and a smarter cabin with extra technology. As before, there's a choice of two lengths and two roof heights for the panel vans and the cabin has been designed to function as a mobile office. It all means that this van remains a strong contender in the medium sized LCV segment. Here is a very important van indeed, at least for its makers, Renault. Over the last decade, a risky development emphasis on electric power has at times left sales of the company's passenger cars under threat. And throughout that period, the brand's continued leadership of the European light commercial vehicle segment has been crucial. More than any other product, this is the vehicle that has to sustain that, the third generation traffic van, which in 2019 was usefully updated to create the LCV we're gonna look at here. It'll certainly need to make good on its glossy brochure promises if it's to face down direct medium-sized LCV rivals as talented as the latest versions of Ford's Transit Custom, Volkswagen's Transporter and Mercedes Vito, plus more recent segment entrants too, like the shared PSA group design that we know as either a Peugeot Expert, a Citroen Dispatch or a Toyota ProAce. An even tougher challenge, perhaps, for Renault will be in differentiating this product from its near-identical design stablemates, Fiat's Talento and the Nissan NV300. Until 2019, this traffic shared its design with Vauxhall's Vivaro too, but that model has now shifted away to PSA group underpinnings, possibly at just the wrong time because this Renault design is now more class competitive than it's ever been. It's been available in our market ever since 1980 with a second generation X83 series design uh, launched in 2001 and this Mark III X82 series model debuting in 2014, five years before the wide ranging product upgrade that we're going to look at here. Plenty has changed. Uh, there's been a wholesale switch from 1.6 litre to 2 litre DCI diesel engines, along with the option of a new twin clutch auto gearbox, plus operators get smarter styling, an upgraded cabin and stronger standards of safety and media connectivity all of which this traffic will need to restore its market positioning. Now, directly prior to this update, sales in 2018 had plummeted by 40%. It is still the third best-selling medium-sized LCV of any kind in Europe though. And in this test, we're gonna find out why. The big news with the revised version of this third generation traffic lies under the bonnet. Now, Renault can't quite make up its mind in this regard with engine capacities for this vehicle, having downsized from 2 litre diesels to a 1.6 litre unit in 2014, for the launch of this Mark III model, uh, it switched back again to a 2 litre DCI engine for this post-2019 facelifted version. Uh, this fifth generation power plant features a variable geometry turbocharger, which is compliant with Euro 6D temp standards, and it's of course far more refined than the rumbly old unit used in the pre-2014 era Mark II traffic. It comes in three outputs, DCI 120, uh, 145 energy, which is what we have here, and DCI 170 energy, uh, with the top pair of engines now available with the option of Renault's EDC6 dual clutch six-speed automatic transmission. That's a potential boon for urban users, although it is a bit slow to react when you accelerate. If your traffic will mainly be used for town-based deliveries, uh, then the entry-level DCI 120 model may actually be all you need uh, with a reasonable 320 newton meters of torque, uh, so you don't have to row the thing along with a gear lever through the streets. Despite that, uh, many shopping at that level will want to stretch to the extra grunt of the DCI 145 energy version we're trying here, with its useful increase in torque to 350 newton meters. This mid-range variant uh, manages 62 from rest in 11.9 seconds in standard roof height H1 form, 
on the way to a top speed of 109 miles an hour. Now those figures are respectively two seconds and six miles an hour better than the base DCI 120 version. You probably won't need the extra performance of the top DCI 170 energy derivative. Uh, the figures here see 62 reached in 9.9 .9 seconds en route to 111 miles an hour. This top variant's uh, 380 newton meter torque figure might be useful though if you'll be regularly towing. It pulls sweetly from just 1500 RPM. Uh, traffic operators get a brake towing capacity of two tons. Runner reckons that the improved version of this third generation traffic will feel pretty much like a large MPV to drive and they're not far off the mark. Uh, that's primarily due to a well-judged balance of ride quality. Now that's something that you really notice over bumpy British tarmac. It's something that the engineers have somehow managed to achieve uh, at the same time as keeping body roll in check through the bends. The hydraulic rear dampers adjust in line with vehicle load, so the heavier the load, the tauter the handling becomes. Is this as good a compromise as Ford has managed to achieve with its rival Transit Custom? Well, not quite. Uh, the ride can get a bit unsettled over bumpier surfaces. Still, the traffic does get very close to the top class standards here. What else? Um, well, in town there's a 13.73 metre turning circle between walls and that narrows to 13.17 between curbs. Uh, the driving position is as commanding as you'd expect and with big door mirrors with convex surfacing on their lower and outer edges, they're present and correct to help with manoeuvring and that can be aided too by the neat wide-angle mirror fitted to the back of the passenger sun visor. Further embellishments are intended to help you avoid urban scrapes include options like parking sensors and two kinds of rear view camera. Another thoughtful touch is the eco mode that you can select by pressing this button down here by the gear stick. Now this restricts the pulling power of the engine and it promotes greater efficiency. Uh, talking of the gear stick, the light but positive six-speed manual transmission is a tried and tested unit. This Renault should prove to be a tough workhorse, whatever its working conditions. Uh, maybe that'll involve deliveries over loose surfaces such as gravel, light snow or mud. And if so, a standard grip extend feature allows one wheel to spin to help you gain traction. Or maybe it'll involve uh, long motorway mileage. Well, if that's the case, you'll appreciate the uh, improved refinement, which is aided by an acoustic windscreen using a special resin that filters out vibrations and minimizes hum and restricts the amount of transmission noise that you get in this cabin. Although this design is shared between several brands, when produced as a Renault Traffic, it certainly has its own identity, especially in this updated post-2019 form, where the exterior styling features changes intended to offer a more expressive and high-tech look. As before, the windscreen is steeply raked and car-like. It creates a distinct break from the line of the bonnet. And plusher models like this one get this body-colored front bumper with plastic inserts that feature beady front fog lights. As for what's uh, changed with this revised version of the X82 Series Mark III model, well, the headlamps are now of the full LED variety and there's a Renault signature C-shaped LED running light layout surrounding them in line with the brand's current styling theme. Uh, further visual enhancement is offered by the smarter and more confident grille. Uh, now this features a more prominent Renault Diamond logo and also on this top sport variant, chrome inserts too. In short, this van has evolved. Now this remains one of the larger medium-sized vans on the market. As usual in this class, there are short L1 or long L2 wheelbase body shapes. And even this L1 version is virtually five meters in length. There are two roof height options. We've got the standard one here and a wraparound rear bumper flows into generously sized, strategically placed side protective moldings that give a robust appearance and which are perfectly sited for the rough and tumble of this van's likely working environment. Plusher traffic models like this one are marked out by the use of body color for the door rails and for the rear taillight columns too. 
Two wheel designs are available, uh, 16 inch steel wheels with large style covers for business and business plus variants. And the 17 inch cyclade alloy rims that we have here, uh, which are standard on this sport derivative and which are offered as an option on the other versions. The rear end emphasizes this model's robust, user-friendly character with a square form that signals that carrying capacity has been maximized. The tail lights are mounted high up on the bodywork to keep them out of harm's way and to aid visibility. And this central rear stop lamp is mounted even higher so it can be seen in congested urban traffic. Time to take a seat inside. Now this optional hands-free key card facilitates easier access and entering is easier than with some rivals thanks to the wide, deep design of this cabin step. Uh, once you're inside, you'll find slightly more of a quality feel than was evident in the original version of this Mark III design. And that's thanks in part to the addition of uh, smart satin chrome inserts for the air vents, the center console surround, uh, the air conditioning controls, and the instrument cluster. Uh, you also get a revised uh, gear lever restyled, which is more comfortable to hold, and additionally gets the satin chrome embellishment. There's now a single color dark grey interior theme, which is intended to make the cab feel more like that of a passenger car, and smarter seat upholstery too, with a so-called high-tech compo finish for the volume variants, and smarter Java trim for this sport model. Now, because this is merely a mid-term update, this traffic doesn't feature any elements of Renault's current instrument vehicle design. It continues instead with a layout that was borrowed from the old fourth-generation Clio Super Mini, which features this Cyclops Eye-style oval-centered digital readout and flanking round uh, rev counter and fuel gauges. Click on the end of the right-hand column stalk and you get various trip computer readouts for things like tire pressures, uh, average speed, cruise control settings, range and fuel consumption readouts. Elsewhere around the dash, uh, there are nice touches like the uh, chrome effects around for the instrument panel, um, the shiny piano black trimming around the air vents here, and also the chunky three-spoke wheel with its useful um, square audio system column stalk. And there is some stuff that doesn't feel quite as smart, actually, like the rather dated graphics of the infotainment system and the rather cheap feel of those air conditioning controls there. Overall, though, the ambiance is reasonably unvan-like. Instead, it's more like the kind of modern MPV that this traffic can be if you order the nine-seater people-carrying space class version. Build quality, that seems strong. Uh, this French van is these days exclusively assembled in France at Renault's Sandeville plant. Uh, the previous generation pre-2014 era Mark II traffic model that was also made in Spain. And like most Gallic vehicles, it has very comfortable seating with a six-way adjustable chair for the driver, which is comfortable on longer trips. And that's partly because it sits at an ideal angle to the reach and rake adjustable steering wheel, and it can be reclined further back into the bulkhead. Uh, using a pump system, uh, the seat height can be adjusted through a 60 millimeter range, while uh, backward and forward travel is 200 millimeters. High density foam gives excellent lateral support to the back and squab of the seat, and the driver also benefits from an integrated armrest in the door panel. Plus, this seat can be heated as an option. Around you, the materials feel like they're going to last. Well, at least most of them do. Uh, this panel covering the optional passenger airbag might struggle once a few uh, pairs of steel toe cap boots have been presented to it. Uh, a range of extra thoughtful touches are certainly welcome, like the wide angle mirror on the back of this passenger sun visor, which helps when reversing. Uh, the door mirrors, they're certainly decently sized. They're heated and electrically adjustable, and they come with a separate lower wide angle section. Now if you ran an old pre-2014 era second generation traffic model, you'll notice quite a lot of extra space in this cabin. This Mark III design offers an extra 116 millimeters of cabin length for all front seat occupants. Well, almost all. If you happen to have drawn the short straw and find yourself stuck in the middle of the cab in front of the dash mounted gear stick here, uh, your journey will be about as comfort compromised as it always is in vans that offer a middle seat berth 
like that. We're not going to criticize that though. Uh, there isn't much that the designers can do to make this feature more usable. And on countless occasions, uh, we've been thankful to have it when, uh, for example, our testers have needed to do things like drop the kids off at school on the way to work. In any case, if you've specified a model with the mobile office style folding front seat, which is standard, providing you avoid entry-level trim, you'll find that most of the time you won't be using this space for seating anyway. Uh, you fold this down and you've got yourself a workable desk surface with a cup holder and a rather flimsy feeling clipboard attachment that can be mounted into angled slots to face either the driver or the passenger. Uh, below there is ample space for a laptop. And that's the kind of device that you could quickly link into the various infotainment technology features that are on offer. Uh, Bluetooth is of course standard across the range and Renault has added in a better quality microphone for improved sound quality. We mentioned infotainment. Well, ideally you'd want this MediaNav 7-inch color touchscreen, but unless you choose this Top Sport variant, you'll have to pay extra for that. Still, if you are going to be conducting business on the move, the additional outlay might be quite worthwhile, especially now that Renault has built uh, the advantages of Android Auto and Apple CarPlay smartphone mirroring into this setup. Now, there are two versions of this package, the standard MediaNav setup and an extra cost our link version which includes voice control and various TomTom -tom live services. Uh, either way you get simple nav, multimedia, phone and vehicle options plus the R link package includes a services section via which you can download apps like Coyote from Renault's R link store. Uh, plus this screen can also store pictures and video it can show a rear view camera display if you pay the extra to get that. If you want, uh, however, a simpler and more cost effective media connectivity solution, you can simply download Renault's clever Art and Go app onto your smartphone or tablet and then mount either or both onto the dashboard using a cradle like this one here. Now, this is either standard or optional depending on the trim level you choose. Uh, whatever your preference, it'll be much easier to keep track of the day's appointment in between slurps from takeaway beverages and they can sit in one of the three provided standard cab area cup holders. Uh, there's one at either end of the dash top and there's a fold out one here in the center. Something that we'd be using on a particularly regular basis is this large space on top of the dashboard here. It's ideal for dropping things like paperwork, folders or laptop cables into. A USB port resides here too, along with an SD card slot and an aux in point. Interior storage space is in fact one of this traffic model's strong points. There are no fewer than 14 separate cubbies provided with a class leading combined capacity of 90 litres. Uh, much of that is available in and around the dashboard area uh, that includes a 12 litre glove box. Unfortunately, you can't lock that, but it is large enough to accommodate an A4 sized clipboard and a 1.5 litre bottle. Uh, there is also a range of other easily accessible spaces for things like keys, coins, phones and delivery notes, including a ticket flap in the driver's sun visor, a pull-out cubby by the driver's right knee and decently sized 4.5 litre door bins with smaller separate corner bins. Plus this top sport model also gets this closed lidded upper dash storage area too. Although in some traffics we've tried, uh, the lid wasn't very well fitted. Annoyingly, coat hooks cost extra. Items that don't need to be directly at hand can be stored in the 54 litre storage area beneath this front passenger seat. And while we're looking beneath the passenger seat, uh, we need to point out the clever load through hatch. It's an option or a plusher model standard fitment feature, which in our view is essential given the way it enables longer items to be poked through from the cargo bay into the cab. As you'd expect, Renault offers a very wide range of traffic variants to suit specific needs. Uh, with the post-2019 facelift, prices increased by only around £250 across the range, which does seem reasonable given the extra technology that's now included. Uh, all of that means that the asking figures haven't changed much. Uh, the panel van models that we're focusing on here sit mainly in the £24,000 to £32,000 bracket, excluding that. Uh, avoid the base uh, DCI 120 
2020 engine and you'll be offered the option of EDC automatic transmission. As part of this facelift, Renault reduced uh, substantially the number of traffic model variants. The previous range of 124 versions has been reduced to a more manageable 53. As an alternative to this standard panel van, these still include a crew van version with second row seating, which increases the vehicle's total passenger capacity to six people. Now across the range, there is a model for model premium of around 2,150 pounds. If you want to upgrade, from a panel van to get those uh, extra people into a crew van. As you'd expect, traffic pricing across the range matches up very closely, not only to this vehicle's key Fiat Talento and Nissan NV300 design stablemates, but also to its close market rivals like Ford's Transit Custom and Vauxhall's Vivaro. In fact, you may even save a little over the Ford and over other mainstream competitors like Peugeot's Expert, uh, Citroën's Dispatch and Toyota's Proace. And you'll save several thousand over a directly equivalent German contender like Volkswagen's Transporter 6.1 or Mercedes Vito. Uh, those who need to focus on the carriage of people rather than packages are offered the nine-seater passenger version, and that's also available in luxurious seven-seat space class guys. In either form, uh, that traffic bus has a fully glazed cabin and removable uh, three-seat benches in the second and third rows. A wheelchair accessible version is also available, and that has a fold-down aluminium ramp. We're assuming, though, that most potential customers for this Renault LCV will be panel van people, and they'll be selecting between short wheelbase L1 and long wheelbase L2 body lengths and low and high H1 and H2 roof body styles. Uh, we have the short wheelbase low roof model here. Now, once you've made that choice, then you'll need to decide on the version you want of the two liter DCI energy diesel engine that all traffics now use. This is offered in either 120, 145 or 170 HP outputs. On the continent, a further 95 HP variant is also available, but we won't get that one here. Uh, you will also need to choose between two gross vehicle weights, 2.8 or three tons. They're badged either SL or LL28 or SL or LL30. When it comes to specification, there are three choices, a business, business plus, and an owner driver orientated top sport spec. Uh, even the standard model comes reasonably well equipped with uh, features like uh, digital radio with steering column audio controls, Bluetooth and USB connectivity, a trip computer, and a 12 volt socket in the cab. A uh, compo upholstery features both on the dual front passenger seat and the six way adjustable driver's seat too, and that has both lumbar support and an armrest. And as usual with an LCV of this size, there's a full height bulkhead and a sliding side door. Uh, the 16 inch uh, wheels have Delos full width trims. There's remote control central deadlocking with an alarm. Uh, there's powered heated mirrors and of course, electric front windows. You also get a hill start assistant to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions and a clever grip extend feature which helps with traction on slippery surfaces. Ideally though, you'd want to move up the range at least as far as one of the mid-range Business Plus variants, and they're identifiable by their use of body color, for the door rails and the tail light columns. Uh, you'd want a Business Plus spec traffic if only to get key practical features, which you'd otherwise have to pay extra for. Uh, I'm talking about stuff like the bulkhead load through facility, uh, storage beneath the passenger bench seat, and the fold down middle passenger seat with laptop storage and a detachable clipboard. At uh, this level in the range uh, too, you also get the neat wide view mirror, which is fitted to the passenger sun visor. And that helps with reversing and air conditioning with a pollen filter, rear parking sensors and a dashboard smartphone cradle. Traffic models specified with business or business plus trim will account for most UK sales, but Renault also expects a growing market amongst operators who want to look after their drivers a little more and upgrade in-cab flexibility, uh, hence the availability of the plushest sport trim level that we're trying here. And this will really be for owner drivers only. It's very hard to see too many fleet operators stumping up around £2,850 over the base trim level to get this. Uh, the key addition here 
is Renault's Media Nav 7 inch touchscreen multimedia system, uh, which, as the name suggests, includes NavTech navigation. Additional sport uh, spec niceties include front fog lights, cruise control with a speed limiter, uh, 17 inch cyclade alloy wheels, and auto headlights and wipers. Inside, the cabin gets reading lights and a lidded dash top compartment. Uh, there's also a bit more of a premium look and feel, and that's thanks to additions like metallic paint, a body colored front bumper, a chromed front grille, uh, black finished door mirrors, a leather trimmed steering wheel, and smarter Java upholstery. On to options, uh, we've got some key ones fitted here, like an extra sliding side door on the right-hand side here, a reinforced resin-coated load floor, and the full ply lining treatment for the load area. All three features are ones we'd strongly recommend. Uh, we would also want the larger 105 litre fuel tank, and for the load area, the optional LED load space lighting, and the extra 12 volt socket. Otherwise, it really comes down to how much time you're gonna be spending in your traffic. Uh, if the answer to that is a lot, then you might be interested in niceties like a heated driver's seat. Uh, the passenger bench can be heated too. Climate control and Renault's hands-free key card to ease entry and locking. Uh, there are also two kinds of optional rear parking camera uh, built either into the rear view mirror or if you've specified the seven inch center dash display into the central infotainment screen instead. If this Renault is to function as a mobile office and you see the MediaNav seven inch touchscreen multimedia system as essential, then you might want to upgrade that setup to our link guys in which form it will include TomTom Tom navigation with TomTom Tom live services, uh, voice control, an eco driving coach, and the ability to download various apps from the R-Link store. For some reason though, the R-Link version of that package only supports Android Auto smartphone mirroring and not Apple CarPlay. Uh, other options include a tablet cradle, a smoker's pack, a Kenwood dash cam, upgraded focal music speakers, leather upholstery, uh, front air deflectors, and coat hooks for the cab. Base business spec variants, they can be embellished with rear parking sensors, a smartphone cradle, uh, the bulkhead load through facility, and the wide view mirror for the passenger sun visor. And top sports spec models like this one can be had with body colored side moldings. Uh, now you may well have to pay extra for your choice of paint color. The only standard shades are solid white, red or gray. Uh, metallic paint of course costs more unless you have a sport model like the one we have here. Now we've got this in panorama blue finish. Our owner drivers wanting to make a style statement, well they can specify an optional sport pack. Uh, that features things like a front bumper splitter, chromed exhaust tips, a rear spoiler, and matte black sidebar finishing. Uh, there is also a black edition body kit, which features a body colored lower front bumper, side skirts, and a roof spoiler. Now, customers seeking embellishments like those may also want to add extras like side chrome bars and chrome door mirrors. Practical extra cost touches available across the range include mats in rubber or textile, uh, heavy duty seat covers and a boot entry guard. Plus you can have all weather tiles and of course a tow bar. In addition, as usual with a van, you can add glazing for the rear doors and for the bulkhead. And there's an optional tailgate if you want that. Uh, worth looking at if you're considering the short wheelbase model is the optional interior overhead rack. Now it has a carrying capacity of 13 kilos. Now this two meter long and 25 centimeter high rack is capable of carrying around 10 copper pipes or a step ladder, for example. Uh, the traffic's roof cross member has been reinforced to take the extra weight of that. Exterior roof racks for both body lengths, they're also available as are roof bars. Now, if you want to access these things rather more easily, then you'll need the loading pack. And that includes a steel ladder mounted across the right-hand side rear door and an aluminium roof rack supplied with the rear roller for easy loading. 
Uh, finally, in terms of options, your Renault Pro Plus LCV dealer will want to introduce you to the extra cost ready for work packages developed by specialists Sortimo Mobile Workshop Racking Systems. Now these are installed before delivery and they've been designed to cater for the storage requirements of the vast majority of small businesses and trades. Uh, now customers can choose between near side and off side racking and three options are available. Uh, there's basic, there's standard and there's premium. Premium. All the shelves are made from steel with a load capacity of 60 kilos. As part of each pack, aluminium strips protect the door sills and you get a 9mm thick protective floor which is scratch and impact resistant. It shrugs off soil and water and it features integrated cups for anchorage points along with aluminium uprights for the integrated ProSafe lashing system. Uh, now these ready for work packages, uh, they're covered by a three year, 100,000 mile warranty and the cost of them can be integrated into your vehicle's finance package. Uh, whichever traffic trim level you choose, it's a little disappointing to find that safety isn't quite as well covered as you might hope from a modern era van. Uh, there is just a single driver's airbag fitted as standard and you can't have any kind of autonomous braking system, even as an option. In fact, the only camera safety feature that you can have on a traffic is a lane departure warning system. And that comes as part of an optional 500 pound safety pack, which also includes front fog lights and auto headlamps. Front Front lateral and curtain airbags are on the options list, as are cornering lights and tyre pressure monitoring. Uh, when a tow bar is fitted, uh, a trailer swing assist is included, and that's a system that reduces engine torque and brakes the driven wheels to reduce swaying movement and bring the trailer back in line. Uh, what else? Well, all the seat belts are fitted with limiters and pretensioners linked to front airbag deployment. Uh, the headrests have an anti-whiplash design and an anti-submarining hump is designed into all seats. Uh, the driver aids provided as standard include ABS with EBD and ESC with load adaptive control. And that automatically adapts the system's performance in line with the weight of the load being carried. Uh, there is also the grip extend system we mentioned earlier. Now that acts on the front wheels to gain the best traction on slippery surfaces such as soft ground, uh, sand, mud or snow. It's activated simply by pressing a button on the dashboard and it adjusts ESC performance to assist pulling away at load speeds when grip is at a premium. Hill Start Assist, that's another standard feature, operates automatically when the vehicle pulls away on an uphill gradient of more than 3%. The anti-rollover protection system monitors the angle of body roll and detects a potential rollover hazard. If the angle is deemed to be too great, it applies the brakes to one or more wheels until stability is restored. And finally, let's tell you that the standard fit steel bulkhead has passed Renault's fridge test, and that demonstrates that it's strong enough to withstand the crash impact force of a fridge-sized cube carried in the cargo area without any dangerous deformation that could harm occupants. And that's pretty good to know. So, time to take a look at the loading area, and that's accessed through asymmetrically split rear doors with chunky handles. Uh, these portals wing back to offer an impressive opening angle of up to 255 degrees. Now, for this revised traffic model, Renault gives uh, operators a new three-button key or this optional hands-free key card. Now, that offers single door opening for greater security. On that subject, uh, the rear door now gets a reinforced extra security lock. And as before, the left-hand door there, which carries a number plate, can be locked independently so that longer items can more safely be carried poking out of the right-hand door. And this loading floor is 552 millimeters from the ground. What about capacities? Uh, well, that of course will depend on your choice of body shape. There are two body lengths, the short wheelbase variants badged SL or L1, and the long wheelbase derivatives badged LL or L2. Uh, there are a couple of roof heights available in each case, either standard H1 or high roof H2. We have a short wheelbase standard roof height L1 H1 model here, and that can manage a 5.2 cubic meter load capacity total. So even here, uh, your traffic panel van will be able to 
swallow up to three Euro pallets or no fewer than 11 BA13 spec standard sheets of plasterboard. Now this though can rise to as much as 8.6 cubic meters in the LL long wheelbase high roof panel van variant. Now for reference, the biggest version of the rival Ford Transit Custom can take up to 8.3 cubic meters. There's 1,662 millimeters of interior loading width, which narrows to 1,268 mils between the wheel arches. Now we just referenced your roof options. The standard roof variant we have here offers 1,387 mils of vertical interior clearance, with the high roof option increasing that to 1,898 mils. Uh, for completion, let's uh, also tell you if you go for the traffic crew van body style, the low capacity figures are 3.2 cubic meters for the short wheelbase version or four cubic meters for the long wheelbase model. Uh, before you decide on body length and roof height, do make sure you take into account the advantages of the load through bulkhead flaps that come as standard, providing you avoid entry level trim. Now this kind of feature uh, also features with direct rivals, the Ford Transit Custom for example, and it allows longer items like ladders or planks of wood to be poked through into the cab. The difference here though uh, is that you can slide items like that much further into the cab. Um, on that rival Transit Custom, you can only push things through from the cargo bay as far as the edge of the seat base. It is useful to be able to do that, of course, uh, but the big difference here with the traffic is that you can go further with an extra flap in that seat base, which allows items to slide further up into the passenger footwell. The first flap in the bulkhead adds an extra 41 centimeters of loading length. The second adds 80 centimeters. Then the apertures they create are 228 millimeters high and 510 mils wide, and the flaps are held open by magnets. Ultimately, this load through bulkhead is a crucial feature because it could make it unnecessary for you to pay more for an LLL2 long wheelbase traffic model. After all, with this load through hatch fully open, this standard short wheelbase SLL1 variant's total interior length is already pretty impressive. It's able to increase from the standard 2,537 mils to as much as 3,750. If you do go for the long wheelbase LLL2 model, you'll find that the standard cargo bay length will increase from 2,937 millimeters to 4,150 mils. That latter figure is class leading. Of course, operators won't only be concerned about the capacity they can carry, they'll also want a van that can deal with heavy weights too. Now in short wheelbase form, you get a choice of either 2.8 or three ton models designated either SL28, as in this case, or SL30. The long wheelbase range sticks with the heavier option, so there you'll be looking at an LL30 variant. A 2.8 ton version can deal with a payload of anything between uh, 1,036 kilos and 1,078 kilos, depending on the variant and the trim level you're looking at. A three ton model can deal with between 1,170 kilos and 1,240 kilos, depending or model. Now those figures aren't quite segment leading, but what operators are left with, uh, a vehicle that can be specified to carry nearly 1.3 tons spread across up to three Euro pallets, is still very competitive in the class, as is the two ton brake trailer towing weight. What else? Uh, well, as usual, there's a standard side loading door on the left-hand side of the vehicle, and there's an optional second one for the right-hand side, uh, which has been fitted here, as you can see. Now, both come with uh, this useful recessed step, and the width aperture of this side door is up to uh, 1,030 millimeters, while the aperture height is 1,284 mils. In the cargo bay, up to 16 lashing eyes can be provided in the short wheelbase version, with six on the floor, and 18 lashing eyes in total in the long wheelbase models. Should you forget to use those and find everything sliding forward, then you'd be glad of the standard full height steel bulkhead. And that's specified to be able to withstand Renault's so-called fridge test. This is based around the crash impact force of an unsecured cube of the size and weight of a fridge being hurled forward from the cargo area in an emergency stop.
Now, to prevent damage from such unsecured items, most operators will want to look at the kind of ply lining kit to properly protect the low bay that we have fitted here. And it gives you these useful compartments over the wheel arches. As a kind of halfway step towards that, half height plastic sidewall trim may suffice for some. We would want this optional reinforced resin coated polypropylene load floor too, which is easier to clean. You may also want to consider the optional LED load space lighting that delivers 500 lumens of brightness and more comfortable working conditions. And for this short wheelbase model, there is a potentially useful internal roof rack option, a two meter long, 25 centimeter high rack that can carry up to 13 kilos. And some will also be attracted by the ready for work internal storage rack systems that can rack out your vehicle so that it's quite literally ready for work when it's delivered to you. On to running costs. Now in 2014, the traffic switched away from two litre diesel engines to 1.6 litre DCI units in a bid to improve economy. So it might seem a bit counterintuitive that this post 2019 version has switched back to a two litre DCI power plant again. But this more modern fifth generation engine is of course very different to the rumbly old unit that was used in the Mark II traffic. It features a variable geometry turbocharger, which is compliant with Euro 60 temp standards. And as a result, it's said to be around 2% cleaner and more frugal. Renault reckons that operators can expect a two miles per gallon improvement in overall running costs as a result. An engine stop and start system is now standard across the range, as is a selective catalytic reduction system and Renault's energy smart management regenerative braking system too. As for the WLTP rated figures, well, the DCI 120 and DCI 145 models manage up to 52.3 MPG on the combined cycle and up to 143 grams per kilometer of CO2 in the case of the DCI 145 energy variant we're trying here. The top DCI 170 energy version manages up to 48.7 MPG and up to 153 grams per kilometer. If on DCI 145 or 170 variants, you choose the optional dual clutch automatic gearbox, you'll hit those figures by around 5%. If you run a fleet of vans though, you won't need telling that figures like those are pie in the sky unless you have a cooperative fleet of drivers who are ready to use their vehicles with efficiency in mind. Now, if that is the case, then you'll certainly want to get them using the traffic model with its eco mode continually activated. Now via depression of a button on the gear shift console, engine power and torque uh, are decreased. The response of the throttle pedal is modulated and the operation of the air conditioning and of the heating system too is modified to save fuel. Now that will deliver fuel and emission savings of up to 10%. Now, many fleet owners will no doubt rightly suspect that their drivers won't push the button that achieves all of that often enough. And if so, they can get this eco mode setting permanently hardwired into their vans before delivery. If you've paid the extra for the R-Link version of the seven inch center dash infotainment display, you'll also get a useful driving Eco 2 screen, which offers a trip report option, which can also display at the end of each journey. Now this has various consumption and speed readouts, and it'll score your driving in terms of acceleration, uh, gear changing and anticipation, and it'll produce an overall trip score that you can assign to the type of journey that you're doing. Uh, now there is a screen that allows you to compare scores for different journey types and there's another that gives you so-called eco coaching uh, with fairly self-evident actually advice like drive at a steady speed and change up gears sooner. What else? Uh, traffic insurance groupings are generally rated between 40E and 43E, depending on the variant you choose. Uh, whatever version of the traffic you end up with, residual values will of course be crucial to whole life running costs. Now this Renault can't of course match class leading Volkswagen and Mercedes models in that regard, but depreciation levels are fairly close to what you would expect from most other volume brand competitors in this segment. Uh, independent experts reckon that after three years or 60,000 miles, a typical traffic SL28 DCI 145 Sport variant, like the one we're trying here, will still be worth 25.8% of its original value. 
What else? Uh, well, maintenance costs should be reasonable, courtesy of reasonably lengthy service intervals at uh, every two years or 24,000 miles, whichever comes around first. And a timing chain that requires no servicing at all. Neither does the diesel particulate filter. The engines are tough too. They're said by Renault to be good for up to 250,000 miles. Now, if you want to ensure that the cost of servicing visits don't come as a surprise, then there are pay-as-you-go Renault iCare prepaid servicing plans available, which allow you to budget in advance for those regular checks at a pre-agreed fixed pence per mile rate. Now we should talk a little more about service and maintenance because there lies one of this traffic model's strongest selling points. Now it's backed up by a network of specialist LCV Renault Pro Plus dealerships, all of which offer a dedicated commercial vehicle sales team, uh, B2B leasing solutions and services like overnight maintenance. There's menu pricing for all work and body repair facilities. Plus there's appointment free servicing for diagnosis work and minor stuff can be done while you wait and use the complimentary Wi-Fi. You also get within the hour diagnostics a maximum 48 hour lead time for service and repair. Plus a van for van courtesy vehicle should you want it while yours is off the road. All of that stuff is important for a hassle free ownership experience. Otherwise, uh, things are much as you'd expect. Now, disappointingly, in recent times, Renault has reduced its warranty period from four to three years, but it still covers you for up to 100,000 miles and mileage is unlimited for the first two years. Uh, there's also three years of Renault assistance breakdown cover. Now, in comparison, a Vauxhall Vivaro would give you a three year 60,000 mile warranty and a year of breakdown cover. All versions of this LCV, like most vans, come with a six-year anti-corrosion guarantee. The van market is changing, and this Renault traffic has needed to change with it. It has. This third-generation design has become smarter and more efficient than it was before. And with its MediaNav Evolution connectivity fitted, it also has the potential to function as an office on the road. An owner-driver could be pretty much permanently based in the thing, if they so wished. We especially like the careful touches, the load-through facility and the full steel bulkhead that lets you poke long items into the cab, the eco-mode driving option that makes it easy to lower your running costs, the mobile office package with its folding front seat, and the way that you can mount your smartphone or tablet onto the dashboard to work with Renault's clever R and Go app, plus the wide-angle passenger sun visor mirror that helps when reversing. Uh, now, although we've seen some of these things before in other LCB products, they've been delivered here with a greater level of thought and thoroughness, which operators will like. People like that, though, will probably be more swayed by a set of bottom line financials, which are now slightly enhanced by the Euro 6D temp 2 litre DCI diesel power plants, which are now fitted, and they deliver returns closer to those of key segment competitors like Ford's Transit Custom, Vauxhall's Vivaro, and Volkswagen's Transporter 6.1. An even tougher job for this traffic, though, will be its more difficult mission to steal sales from the manufacturers who also share this design, principally Nissan with their NV300 and Fiat with their Talento. For that job, this French maker has concentrated on a range of other things that business buyers will really care about. Value pricing, a long 100,000 mile warranty, and the way that this vehicle can come completely equipped with its practical, ready-for-work internal storage systems. Oh, and the service-orientated Pro Plus dealer network that's dedicated to LCB users. It'll all make quite a difference to a vehicle that wants to be as crucial in the business lives of its customers as it will be to its brand. It certainly looks well-equipped for the job. Your right-hand van? Well, that's just about the size of it.